Hello and welcome. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant primarily for C++. And I'm also the creator of C++ Insights. And this is also the tool I like to talk about in this series. In this episode, I will explain what C++ Insights is and give you a little introduction in where you can find it and how you can easily use it. Today I'm talking about a feature that makes C++ slightly different from C and I also newly added the support for it in C++ Insights. What I'm talking about is the implicit return statement that gets added to a function main in case we don't provide one. So this is why the sample code today consists of only three lines of code and it practically does nothing. But all the time I see people doing something like this. And while you can do this, you don't have to. And I like to teach you why. So C++ has a rule that if the control flow ends without a return statement, in main one gets implicitly added. So if I do the transformation in C++ insights, we can see we get an implicit return of zero. This is what a standard says, okay? And the support is new in C++ insights. Previously, I didn't do this transformation, mainly because this is not represented in the AST, which C++ insights uses. I have to add it manually. But this is the most simple scenario. Let's take it one step further and look at something like this. Here we have a main fa function that in fact returns, but only in case argc is zero, okay? But what happens if argc is not zero? So we have a return statement from main but the control flow of main would end without a return. And this is why if you look at the transformation here, we see that in line number seven on the right, the compiler adds this implicit return because otherwise we would have a function that is supposed to return an integer and wouldn't. So this is another implicit thing that happens in C++. It's not really, well, that big, but it's, kind of handy because a lot of my programs they don't really communicate with the return value in main so they simply use main to start a program up execute it and then and then it doesn't matter whether we would return zero or one or something like this so this is the most easiest case and this is why you see a lot of my examples where i don't have a return statement like return zero from main or something like this so that's a really short one today. I hope you still can take something from that and maybe spare you one line of code writing in your next project. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye bye.